Hey everybody, today what we're going to do is we got to repair some what looks like to me freeze and thaw damage to this stamped concrete patio. It just looks like some water got down into the surface, froze and popped the surface off this. We just did this last year. They said they didn't use any de-icing salt, so it looks like just freeze thaw damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a stampable overlay over this, 3 8 of an inch, and stamp it, same pattern, we'll use the same stamps, still be gray. First thing we got to do today though is we're going to grind off any of this loose stuff, see if there's any more loose stuff left. Grind off any remaining concrete sealer we put on and just get it ready for Monday. This is a Friday. So that's what we're here to do today just to see how it's going to grind off. I got my I got my hand grinders here, I got a vacuum, I got a leaf blower. So that's the process for today. We'll just see how it's going to go. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly why this failed. I mean we used a 4000 PSI mix with microfiber had air entrainment in it and we use the water reducer and that's what we use on all our stamp mixes and 99% of them you know we never have any trouble on it so you know in in this is it's not like this has never happened to me in the past I mean I've been doing this for 40 years you're bound to get you know trouble with something here and there down the road especially where you live in an area where there's a lot of freeze and thaw from December to about April but in, in most cases I've found in the past, you know, through experience, there has always been some type of de-icing used to melt snow or ice in the winter. And that's usually what causes the damage. So I don't know. I'm not going to speculate what happened here. But um, anyway, it happened and we're here to fix it today. And that's all that really matters. All right. So we got all the freeze thaw damage ground off, all that soft surface down ground down to hard stuff as you can see I got a lot of aggregate exposed right there <laughs> this side was really bad but we're down to good stuff now so we're gonna rinse off the dust give it one more leaf blower to, just to get rid of any standing water then that's it we're gonna let it sit over the weekend and we'll come back we'll come back Monday put the primer bonding agent down get our mixing station with the overlay the stampable overlay all ready to go and we should be able to just go to town on this with the overlay. So Tia's just gonna get the dust. There's not much dust on it because we hit it with a leaf blower first anyway. But... All right, so we're here on our, our stampable overlay. Luke's, what Luke's gonna do now is he's gonna just put the bonding agent down. That's basically just, you know, brushing it down it helps prime the concrete so we don't get pinholes in the overlay and it does help bond the overlay to the concrete too so that's the next process we'll get that all on and we can get going we got our mixing station all set up over here using a couple different mixers today we're using both by Colomix so we're trying out this levy mix from Colomix they just sent us that and wanted us to try this levy mix so we'll be able to put product, you know, put the water in, put the product in that mixes it for us. We can wheel it over to where we need it and dump it. We got Deco Crete stampable overlay mix here, putting down three eighths of an inch. Goes about 16 to 18 square feet, supposedly, at, at three eighths of an inch. We got plenty of product. And then we got a couple more mixers over there. If we want to get two mixing stations going, we can use one of those mixers in one of those big buckets there. So we're just about getting ready to go. This is our mixing station. Got some poly up along the pool. That's a uh, that's like a hot tub pool, swimming pool, like a lap type thing. So there's a current in that that they can just swim in there, and that's covers up you know 20 by 860 square feet of this thing. So we're definitely not getting under that, and they're not moving it. So we're just going to do what you can see here for concrete, which is about 380 square feet. It's 50, 50, 50 water, 50 that, you're right. We cut that bonding agent 50, 50 with water. So, you know, a gallon of bonding agent to a gallon of water, and then it'll absorb into the concrete really good. Keep it. We got plenty, so you can just keep it good and wet. There's no puddling. Yeah. 
the Luke's just going to kind of spread and lightly scrub in that overlay. We want the overlay to completely cover the surface. Basically, it's putting a film over the surface and creating a really good bond for the overlay mix, which also has polymers in it. Polymers are kind of like glue, and that's going to help really bond the overlay to this, to this concrete now. And then it also helps force out some air that's in the capillaries of the concrete so we don't get tiny pinholes in the overlay mix. Um, but you can see the process. That's that's it. We're just making sure there's not going to leave any puddles behind. All right, ready to rock and roll. Get the mixing station all set up. Got the color measured out. We're going to stop mixing. We're going to mix two bags at a time. So the process when doing overlays is basically, you know, add your water in first. With, with DecoCrete stampable overlay, it's about three and a half quarts of water per bag. And so we're putting in seven quarts using two bags. So you add your water in first. And then if you're using color, add your color to the water. Mix that up a little bit to make sure your water is now all colored first. And then add your bags in after that and mix it up. So that's basically what we're going to do for each mix. Um, and then you mix for a couple minutes. Mix for a couple minutes, make sure it's lump free. It should look like kind of like pancake batter when it when it comes out. And that's what Darren's doing with the levy mix. And then uh, so we got a couple we got a few extra guys here today. The guys in the black shirts are actually from DecoCrete Supply. They they agreed Tyler is the one in the he's the one in the black hat. And he agreed to drive out here from Ohio. Deco Crete Supply is in Ohio. And that's usually, you know, we just order from them and they ship to us. But he agreed, he agreed to drive out here and work with us today. And uh, actually bring the product with him in his truck. And then there's a couple of guys here. This guy in the white shirt and his buddy work for themselves. And they're kind of doing like on-the-job training. They've never done this before. And they wanted to learn just how this stuff works, you know, in case they want to do it on some of their jobs in the future. So... We agreed to let them guys come out and just work with us for the day. And so they're going to help us lay the product down. They're going to help us stamp it. In the stamping video, that'll be on part two. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and like the video so you can come back and see part two of the stamping process and just how this all turned out because it turned out beautiful. So that's kind of what I mean. After you get it mixed with the correct amount of water in it, it kind of looks like pancake batter. I don't know how else to explain it. You know, it goes down pretty loose. And then we have a certain rake we're using. Luke is actually using what we call a gauge rake. We set that for about three-eighths of an inch. You can set it to, you know, a half inch. You could set it to a quarter inch, depending on just how thick you want to go. But we're right around the, the three-eighths mark with our with a, the, some little prongs on those gauge rakes that make sure it stays right at three-eighths of an inch. And of course, it's going to be a little deeper where you go down into the grooves of the existing stamp and stuff. So, you know, we're just trying to get a, a thick enough overlay over the top of this stamp concrete. So when we go to re-stamp it, it makes it look, you know, it makes it look like it's perfect and, and real. you got to have it deep enough so when you, you re-stamp those grooves in there, they have room to, to sink down into the overlay and still leave texture. So this is the kind of like the process in the background as as we have a few guys spreading out the overlay you know the other guys are here mixing and we just want to keep this going like we just want we want it continual we don't want to stop we decided to get another one going so we could just make this a little bit faster since we had so many guys here today <laughs> we'll just have you know while Darren's over there dumping with a levy mix two bags We'll put two more bags in this and just mix by hand. So you can really do it either way. And we're using Colomix's X06 hand mixer for the, you know, doing it by hand. And, it, and it's fast. I mean, it goes fast with enough guys. So we were just fortunate enough to have that levy mix on hand, which is, which is really, really cool. My guys literally love that. I would definitely, you know, check out the Colomix stuff. I'll have a link for that down in the description if you want. And then uh, I'll also have a link for the Deco Crete stuff if you want to go on and check their site in case you got to do some of this stuff. But we, uh, you know, I do teach this stuff in the Concrete Underground. You know how to repair concrete, how to overlay stuff, how to stamp. So if you want to, if you're thinking like, wow, this this stuff looks pretty cool, especially after you watch the second video and see how this looks like, and see how you can. You can restore whether it's old concrete, whether it's broom finished concrete, or 
old stamp concrete or any type of damaged concrete how you can restore it to look like brand new instead of having to jackhammer it out and do it over again um, that's all part of you know what I what I try to teach other people how to do in the, in the concrete underground you can see how Luke's just dragging that thing over the surface trying to keep it at the same angle for every you know all, every time he drags it so we have the exact same thickness and then you know you always want another guy going around touching up the edges with a hand trowel making sure the edges all have thickness too now we're just kind of letting this run over the edge we'll clean that up after we're all done the whole job and then uh, and then that's really all you need to do for edges on something like this it really helps having you know two or three guys back there doing the mixing station one guy, we like to have one guy just kind of concentrate on the water to make sure we have the exact amount of water in there that needs to be in there so nothing gets mixed wrong and, you know, we're not going to waste any product. And then it's just basically two bags at a time, you know, dump out the two bags. One guy gets some gauge draped to the right level. And I'm using, what I was using there, I'll show you here in a minute, is what's called a smoother so that's that's kind of like the last process the finish now i got it in my hand right there now wait a minute i'll show you i just took the i just took the gauge rake from luke because i i'm walking back in there with spikes and just making sure everything's gauged out perfect and then uh kind of luke has the smoother so after you gauge rake it like that it has like little lines left in it and you just want to smooth those lines out and we're just going to use what's called a smoother tool which I got right now and you just kind of smooth out the lines make sure everything's smoothed out a little bit you don't have to make it look perfect because you're going to stamp over it so if it has a little texture to it that's fine but you just don't want any lines basically any lines left from the, the gauge rate yeah you can see how easy that is I don't want I'm not really pushing down on that I'm just kind of letting it kind of letting it float on the surface getting out any type of any type of deep marks left like I said by the gauge rake and that's as simple as that thing goes so all in all I mean this took or this has taken us about probably 30 30 to 40 minutes or so to get everything down I can't remember exactly how many bags we, we used but it's you know even even if there was only just me, Darren, and Luke here, you know, Darren and Luke would have done the mixing and the dumping, and then I would have done the gauge raking, the edges, and the smoothing, and this would have gone, you know, fairly smooth still. It probably would have took us another 15 or 20 minutes or so just for the three of us to do this. Um, definitely having the extra guys makes a, makes a big help. So I just want to give a shout out to the guys from Deco Creek for coming out and hanging out for us. It was quite a ride to get here from Ohio. And then obviously to help us for a couple days and then drive back. So that was kind of cool to have that. And that's the type of relationship, you know, you, you create with those guys. They're really good. Any questions you have about product, you just call them. And, you know, they actually pick up the phone instead of getting, a, instead of getting an answering machine. So you can, you can actually get your questions answered when you need them answered. And Tyler's really good for that, too. He's really knowledgeable of all the products. You see, I got the easy job. <laughs> I don't even break a sweat, just being the smoother. And I get to walk back in the stuff, which makes it kind of cool without messing up my sneakers. Those are spike shoes. We use those same spike shoes when we do like epoxy coatings too. So those have about three quarter inch spikes on them so I can walk right in that stuff and it doesn't even mess it up. see how loose that stuff is it actually is it is fairly loose now if you're doing something with a little bit more slope on it you could you could just maybe use three quarts per bag instead of three and a half and see how that goes depending on you know what you're going over and how just how much slope it is because if you were using something this loose on something with quite a bit of slope it's just going to want to run to one side now the sun's on this part here down on the end so when it comes time to stamping, you know, we're going to be hustling because, 
being only three eighths of an inch thick, this stuff does cure up and dry pretty fast. So you're only going to have so much time to get on this and stamp. And you know, this is I this is a little bit over 300 square feet in the sun. And uh, we, you know, we're pretty experienced at, at what we're doing. But I wouldn't want to tackle something too much bigger than this. Just because it cures up pretty fast. You can see Tyler there had to go over my work. I guess I didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> He's just being a perfectionist, that's all. I'm just, I'm just getting on him a little bit. Again, it's only three eighths of an inch, so you put the stamp on you really can't stick that much because it's got to be on Yep. All right, so that's the basic process. You know, you get the mixing station, you got the guys mixing, they dumping, you got a guy gauge raking it out, guy smoothing it, guy doing the edges. So that's the basic overlay process right there. Now it's just a matter of, you know, letting it set up and cure up enough so you can get on it with the stamps. And that's kind of similar to concrete in that way. So basically with an overlay like this, three eighths of an inch, you know, you want to be able to touch it with your hand it's going to still be soft but you, when you pick your hand up you don't want any overlay mix on your hand so you want you want it soft but the surface has to be dry and again it's only three eighths of an inch so if you put the stamp on you really can't sink that much because it's got concrete right under it but uh so that'll be the process we'll be back in a few minutes for that and we'll show you how that's going to work